reducing maternal and child mortality. Nigerian officials and traditional leaders in Kaduna State collaborate to bring better health care to rural communities. Stemming migration, the international community raises over $500 million for multinational military force in West Africa's Sahel region. Remembering Esmond Bradley Martin, one of the world's top ivory trade investigators stabbed to death in his Nairobi home. Africa 54 stands right now. Hello. Thanks for tuning into the show that goes around the continent to bring you stories near and far. I'm Chamberlain Assault at Channels Television here in Lagos. I'm joined by Vincent McCory at Voice of America in Washington. Well, thanks a lot. I'm Vincent McCory at our global headquarters in Washington, D.C. Happy to be with you again for another edition of Africa 54. Now, let's start off with a look at what's being done to lower the maternal and child death rates in Nigeria. Chamberlain also in Lagos brings you that story. Oh, that's right. As part of efforts to reduce the rate of maternal and child mortality in Nigeria, the National Primary Health Care Development Agency site it's engaging 100,000 health workers under a community-based program. The agency aims to bring an end to preventable deaths, especially in rural areas. Here's our report. Significant progress has been made in global reduction of maternal, newborn, and child health in recent decades. Howbeit, maternal, neonatal, and under-5 mortality remains high in many low- and middle-income countries, including Nigeria. This gathering of the Northern Traditional Committee on Primary Health Care with officials of the National Health Care Development Agency is to review the successes made in the reduction of child and maternal deaths in 2017 and strategize for high priority intervention in rural communities in 2018. It's a priority for us to provide vaccines against vaccine preventable diseases, but we also recognize that our children are dying from malaria, from pneumonia, from diarrheal diseases. We also recognize that a lot of women are dying during childbirth. That is why we decided at MPACDA, working with our development partners, to look at simple basic interventions that can be had in the communities. Describing the high rate of maternal and newborn deaths as a national tragedy which requires concerted attention, the Chairman Northern Traditional Rulers Committee on Primary Health Care indicates that traditional institutions must key into the program in order to reduce the burden of such unavoidable deaths. And we wish to appeal to all of us to dedicate our efforts in seeing that we intensified with our mobilization, enlightenment, and then focus more attention on the mischildren and other challenging issues at our areas so that we will accomplish the tax assigned to us. The renewed drive by traditional rulers and other stakeholders to address the scourge of maternal and child mortality recognizes that leadership, commitment and accountability are vital if Nigeria is to end the cycle. Building capacity in terms of infrastructure and personnel are necessary for achieving development. One organization in the business of building capacity on the continent is the African Capacity Building Foundation, the ACBF. The organization has recently been appointed specialized agency of the African Union. Professor Emmanuel Nadozier is the executive secretary of the ACBF. He joins us from Harare, Zimbabwe. Welcome to the program, Professor. Let's start by asking, the African Union has been doing a lot of, a lot of repositioning in the past. Now, there is this focus on capacity building. Could you tell us what this really means for Africa? Well, thank you for having me. The, we are now beginning to address one of the major bottlenecks that uh, prevents uh, African countries from uh, implementing the good strategies and the good policies that they have put in place uh, and achieve the development results that they expect. And this is the problem of lack of capacity. Uh, and so addressing this issue 
uh, and putting it front and center in the development uh, discourse and agenda uh, means that they have uh, actually uh, put the uh, you know put their finger on the on the right problem. So it's really important to pay attention to uh, building the capacity necessary, and ACBF is now in the forefront of of, of doing just that. So having identified that there is need to build capacity across board, what would you consider as the priority areas? There are four priority areas that we need to pay attention to in building capacity. One is to ensure that you have the good governance and uh, accountability, uh, which is driven by visionary leadership. And we are paying attention to building leadership capacity and the capacity of the public sector to be able to deliver development results to the people and be able to deliver services. The second area is to ensure that uh, you have the men and women who have the skills, which is uh, what we call human capital, uh, the skills that are necessary to design policies, to implement those policies, and monitor those policies to achieve the desired results. But we also have to pay attention to the issue of uh, um, making sure that the critical skills that are necessary for Africa's transformation, for industrialization and agricultural uh, modernization are built in the area of science, technology, and innovation. Uh, because that's, there's a huge, a huge gap in that area across the continent. Uh, the third area of priority is, of course, the institutions that are necessary for ensuring the implementation of um, policies or programs. Because often the challenge facing African countries is not because they, are not, they don't have good programs, the Agenda 2063, the SDGs, the National Development Plans, uh, they do have those things. But the problem is with the implementation or the lack of implementation, and therefore institutions such as the parliament, such as the think tanks, and uh, other kinds of uh, rules and regulations that are necessary to improve the business environment uh, to, you know, is, is something that has to be paid attention to. And the last area of priority for us is the issue of mindset. Because uh, for a long time, African countries, have, uh, uh, African leaders and their policy makers have been um, facing some challenges in terms of the way they see themselves and they see the continent. Uh, so the issue of believing in oneself, self-belief, and the issue of believing in Africa that can uh, pro propel its own development, or even the spirit of Pan-Africanism, uh, and changing the mindset of the people to really believe that Africans are capable of developing themselves. Uh, these are the areas that we are going to be paying attention, and that's where we're putting our resources right now. All right, then, Professor Emmanuel Nadozi, Executive Secretary of the ACBF, thank you for joining us today on Africa 54. Thank you for having me. Well, I want to know what you think about Africa 54 and the stories you cover. Join the conversation on Facebook. The address is Africa 54, and check out our headlines 24-7 on voaafrica.com. Now, coming up, threat to free speech in South Sudan. A new UN report reveals South Sudanese government restrictions that hinder information sharing. Now, the report titled Right to Freedom of Opinion and Expression in South Sudan says human rights in the country are being relatively impacted. Thank you.